Good morning, or good afternoon, or evening. Whenever you are watching this, welcome. This is Rehoboth Christian Reformed Church. My name is John, and I have the privilege of being the pastor, and we're glad that you are taking some time to join with us on this day. This feels weird to be back to a recording with no in-person presence but we recognize the steps that are necessary in order to keep ourselves and our loved ones and our community safe. And so we will go through this next few weeks and together uh, continue to celebrate God's goodness even when we can't be together. This Sunday, for uh, December 27th, and for next Sunday, January 3, the services will be recorded and then uh, available on YouTube. And then starting on January 10 and the following Sundays, what we will be doing is having live worship, and I'll be bringing a live message through our live stream. So rather than pre-recorded, uh, we will be having those events live. And as a worship design team, we just felt like those created a better experience. So even though there will not be people here present in person, we will be gathering together and you will be joining us online. Another thing that I'm really excited about is that for those Sundays, we will also be uh, specifically focusing the first five to seven minutes of our service on our kids. We want to celebrate uh, the kids that God has blessed us with in Sunday school from uh, newborn to Sunday school. We have over 50 children and those children are important to us. And so we want to specifically take those first few minutes, uh, have a kid's song and a kid's message, and we think that will be a nice way to, yeah, gather the kids, let them enjoy that first part of the service together with us. Next week, on Sunday, January 3, we will welcome Sean Bricks, who will be bringing us message. Sean is a... uh, working for Calvin Seminary in connecting the students and churches with the work uh, and the opportunities that are there in the seminary. And so we welcome Sean next week. Let's open with our word of prayer. God, we really liked being in person, and we understand that we have to not be in person at this point. And so we want to give you thanks that we can, through the miracle of technology and the internet, still gather, that we can still hear your word, that we can praise your name, and we can be reminded about your truth and how that applies into our life. And on this, Lord, our last Sunday of 2020, we give thanks. This has been a more difficult year than any of us imagined at the beginning. And for many of us, the most difficult year we've ever gone through. And so, Lord, we give thanks that you continue to lead us through it. And we pray that as we enter into 2021 and the hope that it holds, that we will know above all, you hold us. And that that will give us great confidence, peace, strength, and fill us with joy. In your name we pray. Amen. (laughs) He's got the whole world in his hands, 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 he's got the little bitty baby in his hands, he's got the little baby. Hands, he's got the 
want to invite you to join me in a time of congregational prayer. Lord, the give thanks for your continued guidance over us in this past year. And Lord, we want to celebrate uh, the life that you've given us and the continued care. Uh, we pray uh, for those this year, Lord, who left their earthly home to join with you in their heavenly home. For Lawrence Hellinga and for Alita Brinkman, Lord, we give you thanks for the many years, both of them over 90 years of life that you granted to them more than they probably ever expected. And yet, Lord, we know that because of your truth, their real life, their eternal life with you has just begun. And so, Lord, we give thanks for your promises that are true because of Jesus Christ, his love, his death, his resurrection. We also give you thanks, Lord, for the new life that you brought into our community this year. We give you thanks for Cooper Inwood, for Hallie Tininga, and for Maggie Verhoog. And Lord, these are blessings, and we pray that as you watch over these children, as you bless their families, as you watch over all of our young parents and families, that they would experience at this time and through this next year, the wisdom and the beauty of your providence and care. For Lord, you have designed us to live our lives not for ourselves, but to serve and love one another. And as we do that as husbands and wives, as we do that as mothers and fathers, as brothers and sisters, then we experience the blessing of life the way you designed it to be. And so, Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us all through your spirit, the wisdom and the strength to serve and love one another. And finally, Lord, I share again the prayer of Thomas Merton. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you, always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. you 
as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. This is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God and I will sing of the goodness of God I'd like to welcome at this time Jackson, Harrison, Daniel, and Alec Brinkman, who are going to be reading to us our scripture for today, Psalm 139. Welcome, boys. Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my goings out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the lanes of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is a light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearful and wonderful made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. And I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained from the where written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How, how vague the sum of them. We where I count them. 
where would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked away from me, you who are bloodthirsty, that they speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. I do not hate those who hate you, Lord. I abhor those who are in rebellion against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, Lord, and know that my heart tests me, so I know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me to, in the way everlasting. Thank you, Brinkman boys. We have been going through tough times. I think there are many of us who would say this has been one of the toughest years we've faced, and as a society, it definitely has been more challenging than anything we've experienced or that I've seen in my lifetime. And the reason I wanted to look at Psalm 139 with you today is because I know that it is important that when we go through tough times, we remember God's promises. We look at what God says about life and we hold on to what he says rather than what we are seeing or experiencing around us. And Psalm 24 is a beautiful poem. And it's 24 statements that grouped, are grouped into four sections and uh, each, each statement of six statements or six verses. And uh, I want to help us to understand it this morning by using the following four words. And they all begin with P to help you remember and carry this with you as we enter into 2021. The four P's are this. Perceiving that God is all perceiving that God Two, that God is all present. Three, that God is all powerful. And four, that God is all protecting. Let's walk through these together and see how these play out in Psalm 139. The psalmist begins and says, You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. And he invites God, he says, God, you have searched me and you know me. And the first P of perceiving is really the fact that God is all-knowing. Or we use a fancy word called omniscient, that God knows everything. And not only does God know everything that's happening around us or outside of us, but God knows everything that happens on the inside. He knows what we think. He knows what we do. He knows what we say even before we say it. And what I want us to realize is that this means, first of all, really, there's nothing that we can hide from God and there's nothing that we need to hide from God. In our lives, we, we try to hide things from other people. We do this all the time in different ways. We hide those things that we're not proud of. We hide those parts of us that we know aren't what God would want from us. Uh, we hide constantly from one another. And that hiding leaves us in the dark and it separates us from one another. And it, and it puts a weight and a burden into our lives. And what the psalmist is saying is that, God, you've searched me and you know me completely. There's nothing that I can hide from you. There's nothing that I should hide from you or want to hide from you. And the reason that we hide things is because we're afraid that if people found out what we were hiding, they wouldn't love or accept us. And yet, the psalmist goes on to say, God, who knows everything about us, hems us in behind and before, and he lays his hand upon us. I just get the image of a child 
gathering into a parent and, and sitting on that comfortable chair and a blanket being pulled over them and, and snuggling in and, and the love that that parent has for that child and the safety and security that that child feels with that parent. That is what the psalmist is saying. God, you hem me in. You wrap me in the coziest blanket and you hold me tightly and you know me completely and you accept and you love me. God knows everything. Second, God is all present. Another fancy word we have for that is omnipresent. God is present everywhere. Verse 8. The psalmist says, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Here's this vertical contrast. The psalmist is saying, look, as high as I could go, all the way to the heavens, if I go to the depths, to the land of the dead, the deepest place, God, you are there. And then he continues, if I go continue... If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and if I settle on the far side of the sea... Now, this is interesting when you know the geography of what the psalmist was writing about. Because when he would look to the east and see the sun rise up over the land, there would be the dawn of the sun. And, and when he would look towards the west, he would be on the Mediterranean Sea. And so the sun would set down on the far side of the sea. So he said, here's this horizontal contrast, Lord. If I go vertically up as high as I can go or down as low as I can go, if I go as far to the east or as far to the west as one could possibly go, Lord, you are there. And then in verse 11 and verse 12, he adds this about God's presence. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. What darkness means, as the psalmist is writing, is indeed death. Lord, if the worst thing that happens to me, if darkness comes into my life and I die, even that darkness, Lord, does not limit your presence. Even there, the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. This week, I saw a post of a man who shared in a church his story and his journey with cancer. The man passed away in 2019, but through his testimony that was recorded and, and put online, he, he shared this phrase. He shared this, that he did not want to waste this cancer. That God had said to him, don't waste this cancer. Now, that's a very strange expression to us. And that was even a strange expression to me as a cancer survivor myself. And then he went on to explain it. So what he meant, that God had given them this cancer and this opportunity to continue to show God's love to show God's power and to show God's presence in people's lives, to show how God was making such a difference in his life even though he had cancer. And I think one of the opportunities that lays here for us as a church is in spite of the darkness of COVID that surrounds us, we can be that light. And I pray that we would not waste this pandemic, but that we would use it to shine brightly the light of God. Third, God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Now, when he says, verse 13, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God, as a creator of you, and of me feels broken and hates it when we don't live according to the potential and according to the design that he gave us. God made us in his image and he gave us his character within us. He loves us and he thinks we are wonderfully made. We are his masterpieces. And so God desires that we would live and understand with live within his power within and through us. And he gave us that power through Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. 
over this next year, we're going to be continuing to dig into what does it look like to live a life filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that your goal, one of your goals over this next year would be to grow more and more and to be filled more and more with the Holy Spirit. And as we grow closer to Jesus, as we learn more about his love, as we experience that love, then his spirit will fill us and we will live powerful lives as God created us to live. The final thing is this, that God is all protecting. Verse 19, if only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? David regarded his enemies as God's enemies. And his desire was for God's righteousness. Now, you and I have enemies, but they look a little different than what David's enemies were. Our enemies are illness, sickness, cancer. Our enemies are fear, anxiety, depression, loneliness. And, and we even are an enemy ourselves sometimes against God in our own personal rebellion against God. And so David is praying, God, that I would hate the things that you hate which means that I would see life and the power of life in the way that you see it and the way that you bring it. So those are four Ps. The God, again, is all perceiving. The God is all present. The God is all powerful. And that God is all protecting. But there's one more P that I think I want you to recognize this day. And that is this, that God is a personal God. Where can I flee from your presence? And the idea of presence is actually, the, the word used for presence is the word panim. And the word panim is face. God, where can I go away from your face? And you see, since, God, since the day God created us, God has wanted to be in face-to-face -face relationship with us. And if you think about everything that we've experienced over this past year, the hardest thing has been that we have not been able to be face-to-face -face with each other. And if we are, we have to stand six feet apart and we have to wear a mask. And God's desire is to be face to face with the people he created. Psalm 139 is the most personal expression of that desire. And here's the beauty of that, is that it gives us an assurance and a comfort that no matter what happens in 2021, I pray and I hope it's not a year worse year than 2020, but I know that no matter what happens, I am given the assurance and the comfort of a God who desires to be with me face to face. And when the worst thing that can happen to me in this world is that I am no longer here, then, then the promise of God will be fulfilled for me in that I will be face to face with him. So, maybe you're old. Maybe you're wondering, Will 2021 be the year that is written on my tombstone? Maybe you're facing challenges this year and they seem insurmountable, whether they're financial or relational, personal, emotional, physical. What God's promise for you today is, I am a God who knows everything, I am a God who is present in everything. I am a God who is more powerful than anything. I am a God that will protect you from everything. And I am a God that personally loves you, died for you, and was risen for you, and one day will come again. That 
people is worth holding on to as we enter into a new year. Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your promises, for your spirit, and for your comfort, which comes through us, through your word, and through your spirit. Fill us, Lord Jesus. Use this opportunity, the challenges that we have faced, to fill us with love, with a strong and a bold faith and a bright light that shines for you in each and every situation. Help us not to compromise or to settle or to worry or to fear, but to place all of our hope, all of our trust in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I just want to invite you to continue in this prayerful way. And I want to invite you to, as you, with your eyes closed and, and listen to the song, we're going to listen to When Peace Like a River. And the song's about five minutes long. As you listen to those words and as you reflect on what you've heard this morning, ask the Lord, God, what is it that you need me to hear and to understand? Maybe you already have a grip on it. Then you can just think about that, that one word whether it's the perceiving, the presence, the power, or the protection of God. What is the one thing that you needed to be reminded of, to hold on to, from your personal God who loves you, as we listen together to When Peace Like a River?
just preach the message. I have been encouraged and strengthened, and I pray that you have as well. God is not limited because we can't sit together in church. His word goes throughout the earth, and it accomplishes that which he desires. So may you be strengthened and built up this day. And finally, I leave you, from the, leave you with the words of the blessing. And again, here's this beautiful thing about God desiring to be face to face with each one of us. In the words of Numbers 6, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious toward you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. Happy New Year and God bless.